Um, I think there's a mixture of reasons. Um, all of them amount to kind of the priorities that the university uh, and their alive departments place um, and where they place them. But you have two kind of issues that are kind of um, at play. You have the financial issues um, and you also have the Title IX issues. And so what I mean by that is um, a lot of schools uh, are having difficulty with the fact that female enrollment is increasing and they have to keep their Title IX numbers within a certain ratio. And so um, at a lot of schools, they have you know greater female enrollment. Sometimes they have um, more female students than male students. And so in order to keep the ratios uh, within a certain ratio, for lack of a better term, um, they have to perhaps reduce men's opportunities or add women's opportunities. So instead of adding women's opportunities, a lot of these schools are looking at, okay, how can we reduce male rosters so that we stay within the ratio that we need to stay within? Um, and the easiest sport to do that with, in their eyes, is track and field, because track and field also is a large sport that oftentimes doesn't make a great deal of money and sometimes uh, does incur um, a, a, a large cost. My argument is that there are a lot of other sports that are just as expensive as track and field. Um, and, uh, and they are, you know, they lose just as much money um, as track and field. And track and field, you're supporting athletes through, se through three seasons of play. Sorry, forgive me. Um, instead of just one season of play. And so if you break it down, like for instance, at the University of Minnesota, um, it worked out to uh, being about six thousand uh, dollars to support each track and field athlete across three seasons of play, whereas their baseball team, which lost just as much money in the 2019-2020 uh, um, school year, um, they end up spending about one hundred thirty thousand dollars per baseball athlete, and yet track and field was the sport that was cut um, due to fiduciary you know, reasons. And so that is the issue. And then also going back to the Title IX issue, you know, um, you know, track and field athletes count for 2.5 athletes, essentially. Um, and so you have the same athlete, they run cross country, indoor and outdoor track. That's three sports opportunities. So if you cut track and field and cross country, you get 120 or something of that nature. Um, opportunities off the table and so that can really help with the female ratio um so there are a lot of issues at play here um and it's just an easy way for an athletic department to kind of kill two birds with one stone but what they're not looking at is the deeper implications are the deeper implications rather of their decision and so you know there are racial implications there are social economic implications and there are also opportunities that are being denied um, from, you know, from athletes and ultimately what they're doing is they're pitting female af athlete opportunities against male athlete opportunities, which is wrong. The whole mm -hmm. nature of Title IX is to provide more opportunity for, um, for uh, students, for a demographic that historically hasn't had that opportunity. And what they're doing is they're using that, um, in a really kind of pernicious way, in my view, uh, to withhold opportunity from another demographic, which I think is just very wrong.